In today's video, I want to show you how to use your own Angular components as cell renderers for AG Grid. This means that you can use your own Angular component in each of the cells to render either the text or you can add in more details. In fact, anything that you can put in an Angular component, you could display inside a cell. To demonstrate this, we have a small application where we're loading Olympic medal winners and displaying the results in AG Grid. We will now show how we can use a custom cell renderer as the cell renderer is just a standard Angular component, we'll use a CLI to create this for us. If I open up the terminal, we can use the command ng, g for generate, c for component, give it the name of our component, my cell, and then we're going to inline the styles and template to keep it in a single file. So the Angular CLI has now created us our component. Let's go and see what that looks like. Now, before this component will work inside AG Grid, we need to implement the interface iCell Renderer Angular Component. There are two methods on the iCell Renderer Angular Component interface. First, we have AG init, and this is called by AG Grid when it wants to instantiate this component in the cell. The AG init method receives a parameters object, which has many properties to enable you to write your cell renderer. For example, you might have the data for the row, or you might want to use the value. For our use case, we will use the value. Let's create a property and assign that from our parameters. And then in our template, let's display that value. In the vast majority of cases, when you're implementing your own custom component, you will just want to return false from the refresh method. When you return false, AG Grid will recreate the component when it's required. There are some edge cases when you are updating values where the refresh method may be useful to you and you can return true so that AG Grid does not recreate your component. But as I said, returning false should be your default option. Now to use my cell component as our cell renderer, we go back to our app component and we add a column definition property called cell renderer. We pass this a direct reference to our component, my cell component. Hit save. And now our grid is using my cell component to render the athlete column. To make that more obvious, let's come in here and let's add a hash symbol and hit save. You can now see the hash symbol has appeared in the athlete column. Now to demonstrate that your cell components can be as complex or as simple as you like, we're going to add a button into our cell renderer. So we add our button into our template and we're going to have a click handler on that. And then we implement that in our component. And then on click, we're just going to show an alert saying what the cell value is. If we save that, we can now see that our grid has click handlers and it tells you what the cell value is. So as you can see, this is a standard Angular component. You can even use the constructor and have dependency injection working. So your cell component can be as flexible as you want. Now let's show that we can reuse cell components across multiple columns. Back in our app component file, we could also add the cell renderer to the H column. And you'll see we now have the button there. And again, if we click it, it will tell you what the age is. So you can see how we can reuse a component. But what if we want to customize the component for each column that we use it in without having to create a completely new component every time? Well, that's possible via cell renderer params. To demonstrate this, we will pass in a custom button label for the cell component to use, and we'll set it to different values on the athlete and age column. To pass parameters to the component, we use the column property cell renderer params. And on here, we're going to say button text. And we can do the same thing for the age column, but pass it a different button text value. Let's just format our code. Now to use this button text value, we go into our cell component and we will access it via the params object. AG Grid merges whatever params you pass in to cell renderer params with its own parameters. So now let's extract the button text property. And then let's use that in our component. So now you can see that the default value is being used because we haven't yet set it from our params object this dot button text equals params dot button text. Now you can see that TypeScript is complaining at us because button text isn't a known property on iCell renderer params. 
and that's because it isn't. Now we could just type the params as any, but that's not the best solution that we can come up with. A better way to approach this problem is to define an interface for your custom params. And this way we can tie together our component implementation with the params we expect to be passed to us on our column definition. To do this, let's create an interface called my cell params, which will have an optional property of button text. We can then use this interface alongside I cell renderer params. And if our button text doesn't have a value, we provide a default. So now TypeScript is no longer complaining. And if we wanted to, we could use this interface in our column definitions to help improve the auto completion we get. So for example, we could cast this as my cell params, and then we would get auto completion for the parameters that our component expects. And now let's see our demo. We can see we have name and age, and these are coming from our button text values. If we update that, you can see it's updated. So we have now made our cell component customizable for each column that you use it in via cell renderer params. Another feature that you might want when using custom components is to have different components used depending on the value of a cell. To do this, you want to use the cell renderer selector function instead of cell renderer and cell renderer params. So for example, let's have two custom components for our age. And based on the value of the age, we will either use the under custom component or the over component. So to do this, we replace our cell renderer and the params with cell renderer selector. The cell renderer selector takes a function which receives the same parameters object as your custom components. That means we can write this code to say if the params value is less than 25, then use the component under component, otherwise use the over component. And then if we look at our demo, we can see whenever the age is under 25, under is used, and where it's over, the over component is used. If you also want to use custom parameters with cell renderer selector, then the object you've returned can also contain parameters, and they will be used instead of the cell renderer perhaps. Now, if creating a full custom component is too complicated for what you're trying to achieve, then it's also worth knowing that you can also provide a function that returns an HTML string as a cell renderer. So for example, for country, we could implement the cell renderer as a function that returns a HTML string. And you can see that we have got the bold formatting. So in simple cases, when you do not need a full Angular component, you may find it easier to return a custom HTML string. And that brings us to the end of this video. I have shown you how to use a custom Angular component as a cell render for AG Grid, how you can customize that component using cell renderer params, and also how you can dynamically choose which component to use via the cell renderer selector. If you like this video, make sure to watch the rest of our Angular series on how to use AGGrid in Angular.